us live from Zanu PF 17th annual people's conference 20th ex deputy finance minister honorable Mkube. thank you so much for taking your time to have us right here no, thank you for having me. we are so much excited and, and happy to have you right here I, I understand you've been the past uh, finance minister and many people today in this age are talking about the ability finance and where we are going especially with the economy what are your thoughts towards this um, I, I think the president was quite clear in his speech uh, that um, he is fully supportive of uh, his finance minister and uh, especially around the issue of the, uh, you know, the macro stabilization, the short term, uh, short -term um, stabilization plan that is put in place. And um, wh what has to be clear to people is that we are at a stage where things are not okay. And when things are not okay, the first thing that you need to do is to stabilize things. So the president was just reiterating that, that you know what, the focus is on stabilizing things within the country. Before we really talk, start talking about it more and that's really the crux of the message. Speaking of stabilizing the economy, these are the austerity measures that he has been taking. Yes, I think if you look here carefully at um, what I'm doing, um, it's been centered on you know the main the main facets of his Make sure that you have an efficient allocation of resources. Resources go where they are most needed. And also minimize the amount of interference that you've got from the market. Um, that's, that's really been the thrust of his policy. Uh, what's your response towards the outcome that some of these austerity measures are good as fishing back from the people who are already uh, under really economic conditions, especially talking about the 2% and some of these measures, whereby uh, many people have been having an outcome towards that? Well, what's, your, what's your sentiment towards that? You know, times are bad economically. Um, and what you have is a situation where you have to make the most of the situation that you have. I can understand the reasons behind the is a situation where our economy has become highly informal. If you look at the unemployment levels, if you look at the number of companies that are paying taxes, very few people are paying taxes. Indicators news Chagamun or Uno Ziva, who's gonna pay them? You probably find probably in your entire family uh, that person who's gonna pay them is a government employee. So it means that like at the end of the day you're not having any taxes that you're collecting. But when you look at what's happening in the electronic money uh, world there are billions of transactions that are taking place in. so which means that there's another economy which is functioning outside of the formal economy so given the fact that he needs money from the government he needs to stop printing my treasury bills he needs to stop printing money through my RTGS balances the only way he can do that is that he has to increase my taxes actually. and the only way you can be able to tax people Given that the fact that people don't like to pay taxes, and you get to run on 20 panam and ask it who's paying taxes, you'll find that like probably one out of 20 people is paying the taxes. So the only way you can be able to tax people is to tax them where they're spending their money, where you're probably conducting your transactions. If you go to my banks, a lot of money is changing hands. But like you find all those companies and all those people that are changing, having money changing my hands. There's no more taxes that are accruing to the government. So if you tax people with electronic money, it will force people to come to them, to the to the proper economy. The bulk of this, these are SMEs, uh, which we can safely say that most of them are not really doing well. They are, they are in between average uh, players in this economy. If, if you continue and indigenous, wake, if you continue waking up every morning and as an SME, and throughout the year you're operating with something and money is changing hands. There must be something that's happening that's making you make money. Definitely. I, I've had situations where you have people who are into mining, right? And people are making money for money, but they never pay their taxes. But every year we know no chair. How do you continue to grumble the chair about also with money? So there might be that outcry, yes, I know the arguments around the two percent, but like yes, you know you are you are, you are, you are taxing one who are not doing well and everything. I, I don't believe that people are not doing well. Because you've got people who are doing my legal transactions, they will move money. 
trading money. Yeah. These people are making tons and tons of tons and tons of money. And but now like, we, but now all of, but all of that, because of those people, the few who are really making tons of money against the, the, the majority who are not really making it through. Remember that policy is saying that like my micro transactions, I think it's my transactions below ten dollars. Yeah. I take yeah. so it means you if you're moving your money no tenga madomas tenga chingo enough. The proper things. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be crying. Yeah. Right? So the minute you then have a situation in which you've got my hundreds of thousands changing hands in your accounts. Mm -hmm. You have all these big money is changing accounts, but I want any taxes that you're paying. Surely something has to be done. With your experience in the, in the, in the finance ministry, surely I, I understand that many things that you would have wanted to be done or you have already commended. Uh, speaking from your experience, what would you rather think should have been done or should be done currently for the economy to grow? I, I think we're not being aggressive enough when it comes to the issue of tackling corruption. Uh, we we are not. Um, I, I totally believe that, like we know, um, in the Ministry of Finance, we know in the Arab business, they are corrupt people. And they are corrupt things that are happening. But like, I don't think. Why, why are we not doing? I, I don't think. That? I don't think we're being aggressive enough. And I think sometimes we make my blunders, and those blunders come back to bite us. And I think that's what you find. That, like I think there's the issue here, the, uh, the Jibayo case. There's the issue here on the. You know, there's all these issues. There's issues here, Kazuki, right? The even issues are they're not what one. The issues where people would say that like there's corrupt activities that have happened. But when it comes to being able to come up with my village, we've not been able to arrest that. And I feel like um, uh, we have to be aggressive in terms of the civil sector reform. If we are not going to change the personnel in most of these government departments, um, I can tell you, no matter what we say at the top, Kanawanu, the bureaucracy, Garambairi, in control of uh, of government. And these are people who are going to be in 20, 30 years are the same position. You can change your policy, you can scream at the top of the mountain, you can say all these good things. But if you're not going to change all those people, Torambatin is the same problem. And Torambatin is in circles. And that's why you find, like, you, you could tell Mu Central Committee meeting, you could tell when the president was talking with you. He's, he's, he's frustrated about said some of the things that are happening around him. And there's that thing, you know, he's surrounded them are criminal, right? Tagango, Chinja, I'm sorry. But in Tundu, I will not just say, it's still there. Yeah. So you, you still have some of the people who are responsible for bringing down this nation. They're still in their jobs. You can't surely tell me. Well, what's the problem? Why are we not we, able to? We surely have a, a competent police force. My, my, is, is, is it patronage we, or what? It's an issue of like we have to make sure that the laws are in line with where we want to take our country. If your laws are not aligned to the vision that you have for your nation, we're wasting time. So the Kunotaikira units, you know, if you're talking about stabilizing this country, Unosunga Moon, and it's a home is a jail. But we are actually doing this at the port. He's going to do exactly the same thing. I've been pretty vocal about it. Like, okay, we've got a Soviet style economic reserve. Surely, how do you have someone and no book every day to decide out foreign currency properly? And you, you've had issues in which the Minister of Energy has been complaining. Could like, ah, and this could poor foreign currency. My people are not being given foreign currency, but the government is just going to the company. You, you, you have a situation in which it's a Soviet style economy. So, when you have uh, my system, as in the end, and in the times that we're living in, Nyango Kachinja Gavin, Nyango Kachinja, and Mataru Kwarubunzi, Arana Korabjan, Nyango Kachinja, as long as the system is now because so you, you continue having more of the same. So, that's why I'm saying, but like what you have, for you to be able to fix this country, civil sector reform, we need to reform the civil service. We need to make sure that my laws are aligned. And, uh, and we're really tough. Because, I mean, I, I saw the issue with people would celebrate with you. When I'm a Zisa, $12,000, come on. Yeah. Uh, to celebrate with my Zisa, $12,000. When you've got big fans. When we've got real issues. Yeah. We've got real people. And those people who are part of the system, from the time you are gone up to now, we're still in the same places. They're still the same people, but from watching the Sorok okay, and we start talking about what we need to do. Right, let's sir. let's let's change. Let's change first. Uh, of, 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 of great concern, uh, Mr. Mkupe, 
we, where are we with the national foreign currency reserves versus our expenditure? What do you foresee for Zimbabwe? Do we have enough for the next day? We're having serious fuel crisis. Well, what, what do you see? Where are we I going think, as a I nation? I think the government has been clear and the Minister of Finance has been clear. We, there's no reserve to talk about it. We, we leave here tomorrow. It's what, an issue. What, what are we leaving on now? It's, it's an issue. Remember the two things that are happening. Yeah. We, we got a situation in which people started believing in us again, believing in Zimbabwe again. People started becoming proud again of being Zimbabwe. So when you start believing in the country and you start becoming proud about being Zimbabwe again, what started happening is with the economy here in terms of activity, there was more activity on the ground. Mabasa. Yes, confidence. Mabasa. Some of these industries and even started pumping. So you find the activity. Guess what? That you start having an issue. Go to quite like Thomas. Start saying, "Oh, we're exporting more." But as you start exporting more, there's more demand also because the economy is recovering. So you find with the growth in PTK in terms of the demand is not at par with the growth in my exports. And here's what, what here's some secret I'll tell you. Akuna Nika in Africa, which is self-sufficient in terms of foreign currency. Less Nika Zese, Zadino Ita, do not also need my external lines of credit. Could have balanced the equation. So you can talk of Kuti, South Africa, it might appear as if it's doing well. When I put one of the dream now, it might appear as if it was Kenya doing well. It's because they've got a sugar daddy behind them. I know to pack it a gap, someone comes in what? And plus, is, is that not also a current issue whereby the rand and the puller internationally they can easily trade where they do not necessarily have to then swap a puller for a certain rate so that they can be sustainable? We, the issue one to one, it's still there. I think you heard the president, what we, we need to have one currency. He's a believer in that. We're going to go anywhere. What are your thoughts on the one is to one? Because the one is to one regime. I mean, people in Zimbabwe are educated and sophisticated. It is what's there because when we talk about currency is one to one, what it means is that one or one one to one is people that have access to money. So Mangucha and the central bank one are going to have currency at one is to one. Those are the people that are living in that world where one is to one. But if you don't have access to Mangucha to be able to get the one is to one, it means that you are then thrown into what? Into the economy and the rest of the world. So the rest of the uh, the rest of the country is in an economy. You put it, the rate is one is to three point five. That's that's where everyone else is operating. That's why you find that you saw the crisis around with like when the parallel market rate by moves. prices. So it means it means at the end of the day, what that means is that what's happening with Mangushi is only for your bread and butter issue. To make sure that this is but like anything else, you have to go into what? You have to go into the other market. That's, yeah. that's, that's what it means. I, I, I hate to cut this uh, live broadcast short. Uh, last but not least, before we just cut it down, Mr. Nkope, do you have any regrets uh, as a politician? I have none. Because I think uh, one thing I've learned, Kana Ukasa Tong. At all. So you choose what you want. And I feel good like I can't be sitting on the side when I know that I can take my country forward. So by taking my country forward, I'm not going to be one of those people who are going to treat out to kill you and everything. But I want to be in the tent and making sure that my voice is heard and I affect policy of the country. That's it. So it's either we end up at this house or we end up state house. Harvest house is not going to pay that much. You go to the but the state house, you go to the state Interesting insights from the ex finance minister, uh, Honorable Chalice. He has been an insight. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. I do appreciate it. To all our viewers, we have to cut this short. Thank you so much for taking your time to watch this www.techmag.tv.